Good afternoon, grade eight parents. Welcome to the 2021-2022 Fleetwood Park grade eight parent information presentation. It takes a village to raise a dragon, and that is a wonderful way to start off uh, our presentation this, this afternoon, as we strongly believe that when we work together, amazing stories in learning and celebration of success happen. We are looking forward to working with you with your children over the next five years. I would like to begin our presentation with our territorial acknowledgement. We welcome everyone and we thank you for being with us virtually this, this afternoon and would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the shared traditional territory of the Coast Salish people on which our school is located. We acknowledge the Casey Semiam and Kwantlen First Nations and would like to recognize the diverse population of people who come to Fleetwood Park Secondary, the Surrey School District, and contribute to our rich, inclusive, accepting, and dynamic culture. We are very fortunate. Thank you for joining us. My name is Ken Hignall. I'm principal at Fleetwood Park, and I'd like to begin by introducing our two vice principals, Mr. Karinzik and Ms. Duff. Hello. Mr. Karinzik. Uh, his portfolio is supporting students whose last names end from A to K, and Miss Duff supports students whose last names uh, begin from L to Z. Our counseling team is a, a fantastic group of um, teachers in the school who advocate for our students, and their portfolios are also organized alphabetically. Miss Porter supports students A to E. Mr. Juzy, F to K, Miss Carey, L to R, and Mr. Crema, S to Z. The best way to contact our counseling team is through email or through Microsoft Teams, and really they are available for a wide variety of ways to support students. Whether that be personal counseling, course selection, career counseling, perhaps post-secondary requirements, um, they are available for students to act as advocates for any questions that uh, your children may have and are happy to help out in any way possible. I'd like to uh, provide an overview for um, our enrollment for our school. As you probably know, Fleetwood Park is a busy, thriving, full and exciting place to be. This year we have 1600 students with 330 students in grade eight. We've listed the other grades there we have a total of about 83 teachers and 32 support staff. Like I say, it is a big, busy, full, dynamic, and exciting place for your children to be. And um, we know that our incoming grade eight class will add to our culture of success. Um, but before we review any of our academic um, and other systems, I wanted to start by saying that the health and safety of our students and staff is our number one priority above all else, especially in times of COVID. So I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Duff, who will provide you a, a, a brief orientation of our um, communicable disease health and safety guidelines at Fleetwood Park. Thanks, Mr. Hignell. All right, so here's our uh, plan to stay healthy this year. Check up, do your daily health check, back up, stay as socially distanced as you can, wash up, wash your hands, use the hand, sign, tatter, hand sanitizer that's provided around the school, uh, mask up, wear your mask everywhere you go when you're outside, um, you can take it off, but pretty much having it on all the time and obviously vax up. That's how we're going to try to stay as healthy as possible. So every morning uh, before you attend school, before you come to school, you need to complete a COVID-19 health check. Um, this uh, is uh, added to the app on your phone but also um, can be found, we provide it every uh, week in the weekly memo. So please look at it, print it out at home. I know I do this daily with my children. Go through the list and just make sure that you're experiencing none of the COVID-19 uh, symptoms. If you're experiencing any of them, 
we ask you to please stay home. Call the school, let us know that you're not feeling well so that you can be excused from your classes and stay home until you feel better. If you are suspicious that maybe you have COVID, then it's time to potentially go get a test. All right, back up. So we are asking students, I know it's hard because we are very, very full school, but we are asking students to try in the hallways to respect each other's personal space. Uh, stay to the right when you're walking uh, so that you can avoid all the crowded and try to avoid crowded areas. Um, there's lots of staircases in this school. So if a staircase seems to be very busy, try taking one of the other ones because maybe there's less kids on it. Uh, physical contact should be limited. Um, kids shouldn't be uh, touching each other. You should be trying to, you know, still give space even to friends. And um, sorry, <coughs> excuse me. You also uh, should enter the school uh, through the nearest entrance to your class. And then all classrooms have hand sanitizer. If you can't wash your hands, please use hand sanitizer before and after touching any door handles or when you come into a room and also when you leave the room. Washing up. The best way to keep COVID from getting to you is washing your hands regularly. So we do ask you to think about this a little bit more carefully. Um, Go to one of the washrooms when you come in and give your hand, uh, hands a good wash when you get to school. Um, and then before and after your lunch break, before and after using indoor uh, learning space used by multiple classes, so places like the gym or music room or library, and then before uh, putting on or after taking a mask, putting on or taking off your mask. Uh, in classroom, student, students should sanitize by before entering and exiting, as I just said, and you should sit in the assigned seating plans that are given to you by your teacher every day, uh, and you should not share basic school supplies or food. Um, it's best that you bring things that are just kept by you and you use them and no sharing, please. A mask up. So all staff, students and visitors are required to wear a mask regardless of your vaccination uh, status while indoors in a school or on buses. Um, I'm in my closed office right now, so my mask is off to do this presentation, but I will tell you it is right here. And as soon as I go to open my door, I will have it, <laughs> I'll have it back on again. Um, if you forget a mask, don't worry. We have lots of them in the office, so just stop by. It'd be best to come into the entrance that's closest to the office and just go up to the front desk and uh, we will give one to you. Uh, we also have reusable masks. So if students want to have um, one of the school's reusable masks that you can wash at home every night and bring back, we're happy to give those. Please just ask for one at the front desk. Backs up. All eligible, eligible students who are 12 and up are highly encouraged to get fully vaccinated. So get your two doses. At this time, it, every student does not have to have two doses to attend school, but we would love to know that most of our students are vaccinated to help all of us stay safe. Uh, and this applies obviously to the majority of our grade eights who are in that age range. We know that a lot of our students are fully vaccinated, so that's wonderful. Thanks, Mr. Hignell. Thanks, Ms. Duff. Um, I, I'm Mr. Oh, pardon me. Uh, I'm Mr. Krenzik, and I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about how we uh, give information out to our students in the community. And so there are uh, several different ways that we communicate. So uh, first of all, if there's any issues with attendance, if your child is going to be away or has an excuse late, please email or call the office with your child's full name and student number, and then the clerks will uh, adjust our entries in My Education BC, which is our information uh, website, to reflect that. In terms of broader communication, we have lots of ways that we spread information around what's going on in our school, and those include our website, our app, which is called the F Fleetwood Park Dragons app, school messenger system, there's a Twitter account with the handle displayed on the screen, 
Mr. Hicknell writes a weekly principles blog that you can sign up for on our school website. It's also displayed at fleetwoodparknews.com. And we also have a Facebook page. Um, in addition to, uh, I think we newly have Instagram and YouTube uh, mm -hmm. accounts as well. So just search Fleetwood Park Secondary and you'll find those. Uh, in terms of teachers, the best way we say if it's something that's not an emergency is to email teachers just because while they're teaching, it can be very hard to get to a phone or for many of our teachers in a school as full as us, they are traveling and don't have one space. And so it can be tricky to get hold of them. So we recommend emailing uh, if it's something that isn't an emergency, otherwise phone the school and we'll find a way to get a hold of them for you. And uh, in general, there's no parent, guardian, or visitor access to the school without having an appointment made already. So please make sure that you reach out to whoever you're trying to meet with before coming in and check in at the office when you arrive. I mentioned My Education BC uh, just previously. Uh, for those of you who don't have children who've been through high school yet, and whose elementary schools may not have been engaged in using MyEd. It's an it's a website that uh, the Ministry of Education uses and most school districts use to uh, keep track of student information with regards to attendance and lates, as well as student schedules and report cards, which is the big one that we use it for. So in the next month or so, uh, the grade eight parents, uh, the information that you have registered with the office, will get added uh, as a MyEd BC account so that you'll have parent access to viewing your child's information in terms of that school information. So just stay posted about uh, us updating the community to let them know that those grade eight parent accounts have been created. It does take a few weeks, which is why those accounts don't exist already. And information about that will be on our school website. So when those are up, uh, the instructions are pretty straightforward on how to set up an account. And if you have any issues, you're more than welcome to call us at the office and we'll help you out. Um, I also mentioned earlier the Fleetwood, Fleetwood Park Dragons app or FP Dragons app. It's free, it's available on iOS and Android, and it's a really great way to know what's going on in the school. I tell all students and staff and any families I talk to to install it. I have it. Uh, the main reason I do that is all of our daily announcements that happen about all of the uh, activities and events and clubs and teams and just school announcements, then most of them get posted to the app as well. And so if you want to know what's going on in the school or if your child, for whatever reason, missed the announcements a particular day, they can go onto the app to check. Um, and then within the app, you can actually select a specific group to be part of so that only particular announcements will get sent to you. If you're not interested in hearing about grad because your child isn't graduating for five years, you can select grad 2026 and it'll just show you the grade eight announcement. So it's a wonderful app, easy to use and uh, it's free, so I highly recommend installing it. Uh, it may be hard for you to see, but every, every child should have received a copy of the schedule, and basically it's how our schedules are arranged for the year. So thankfully in August, we uh, got news that we were able to move from the quarter system, which we used last year, back to semesters. And what that means is that all students have four courses for us each semester, so four from in semester one from September to January, and then four different courses from February to June. And they follow a, a weekly rotation. Uh, it's displayed here. Basically, the classes all occur during all of the blocks. And then Friday, uh, there is a specific day of the week that those rotations follow and they're at the bottom here. Uh, if your child ever needs to know what the rotation is, they're welcome to swing by the office. It's posted on the windows. It's also on the app every day, so students can check their schedules that way. And then the last thing I want to talk about before I pass back to um, it's to Mr. Hignall is uh, our code of conduct at Fleetwood Park. And I'm not going to go through every single rule. If you would like to see those, uh, your child should have received a planner that has extensive detailed uh, notes about all of our rules and expectations. I'll go over a couple of them, but the overarching theme is respect. Uh, Fleetwood Park assumes and expects that students respect themselves and others, that students here and students and staff respect the environment here and that they respect the process and the the uh, the act of learning at school. And so if students are doing those things in general, they can kind of expect that they'll be on the right track. Um, again, if you want really specific highlights around your uh, expectations and code of conduct, you can look in the planner. That said, I do, do want to highlight a few things. Uh, electronic devices. And so Fleetwood Park is a school where uh, the use of electronic devices has been left up to teachers uh, to come up with their own expectations in class. 
So my rule of thumb would be assume students can't use them in class unless the teacher says that they are part of the activity for that day or that they are allowed in that class. But having uh, phones or iPads or tablets allowed in one particular class does not mean that it's uh, that way for all classes. And another fairly common question that I get asked by grade eight parents is, do my, does my child need to have a device? And the answer is no. If there's ever an activity in class where students are going to use an electronic device, this, the teacher in school will provide access to something. And that might mean sharing with another student or might mean one, using one of our bookable iPads or laptop carts, but it's not mandatory to have. My recommendation is to not have one and not bring it. Um, unfortunately, Miss Duff and I do have quite a bit of experience uh, working with students and admittedly many grade eights where uh, devices have gone missing whether they're lost or or borrowed without asking or taken um, you know it varies but you know very expensive mistake for students to learn so i'd really encourage thoughtfulness around whether or not uh, i would send a grade eight student to school with an electronic device when they're not necessary in terms of dress code uh, you basically suggest please dress for success um, make sure that the clothing that your child is coming to at school is appropriate. Um, Fleetwood Park is a no hat or hood school, which means that, you know, we do go around and remind our students to make sure that while they're in the building that they don't have hoods or hats on. Um, we try to be kind about those, but if students are serial repeat offenders, you know, things escalate and we feel like it's not really necessary for that to happen. So hopefully your child can appreciate and respect those, those expectations. Fairly obviously, Fleetwood Park and most <laughs> and all schools in Surrey are uh, prohibited. Uh, we prohibit smoking, vaping, alcohol, and drug use. Um, you know, it is an unfortunate thing that we deal with uh, as an admin team, but know that when there are issues, we do try to approach these issues with kindness, but also looking for support from families to help us work through these sorts of situations when they happen with students. And then finally, uh, this is back to our uh, health and safety reminders, but physical distancing just having students and our staff all spread out as much as possible. We, you know, we are a full school and it's gonna, it is impossible to be completely physically distanced from everyone at all times, but we are asking and we expect everyone to do their best to physically distance. And the district has laid out fairly specific guidelines around occupancy and um, group size limits in schools. And so just know that we are following those in all of the school events and class events that we have planned. All right, I'll turn it over to Mr. Hignall. All right, thank you. Career Education 8. So you may have seen on your child's timetable a uh, line called Career Education 8. I just wanted to let everybody know that Career Ed 8 is a non-enrolling course, so there isn't a specific class dedicated to Career 8. However, it is a ministry requirement, and so we are able to uh, provide that curriculum to our students as it is integrated into their grade eight and grade nine elective classes. And so those elective area teachers will be assigning career education assignments throughout the semester as it fits into their particular subject area. We have a career education coordinator at the school, Mr. Erb, and Mr. Erb is going to be meeting with um, your children uh, this year to get them signed up for a digital portfolio called My Blueprint. And um, your children over the next five years will compile um, their success stories of learning in their My Blueprint digital portfolio. And then one of the last things that they will do at the end of their five years in grades 12 here is to do um, an exit interview. And that exit interview uh, will refer to their digital portfolio and um, your children will be able to talk about uh, some of their favorite and most meaningful and powerful learning experiences. So their My Blueprint will follow them over the, the five years. Um, and part of that will be some self-reflection assignments uh, that Mr. Erb will be um, uh, assigning to your children throughout the year. So Career Education 8, not a particular enrolling course, but integrated into their elective areas. And extracurricular, over to Ms. Duff. Hello. Um, extracurricular clubs and athletics. This is um, one of the biggest changes, I think, to the school. Um, this year is that we are allowed to have clubs and athletics. 
Uh, we'll obviously need to ensure that students are following all of our COVID-19 guidelines, and those include things like students wearing masks, uh, still trying to distance, uh, proper hand hygiene is being used. Uh, you'll notice if you attend a sporting event at the school, even if it's outside, that we'll be asking for attendance, uh, that we'll avoid uh, shared materials in classes and, you know, still maintain the cleaning processes that we have along with that. Uh, and then we'll have small groups and room capacity limits, uh, food protocols and um, guest volunteer protocols as well. So all of those are kind of some of the things that are that are in our guidelines this year for how to run schools and still have athletics and clubs, but mostly we're very excited. Um, a lot of our school clubs did run last year, but they ran online. So I know the kids who were used to meeting on teams are all very happy to be able to meet again uh, in person. Um, and I know our student council is very excited about getting things started. One thing that they'll do very soon will be a club's fair. And we'll be uh, excited to get our grade eights out to check out what's going on so that they can get involved because it is joining a club or an athletic team is a great way to get involved in high school and um, have a really positive experience here at Fleetwood. And I challenge all grade eight students to join at least one club this year. That is your grade eight challenge for me. Join one club at least. Yeah, yeah at least. Yeah, there's so many good ones. So we have a wide variety of service and interest clubs. Uh, there's clubs that uh, focus on uh, spreading awareness for different causes around the school and locally and obviously also global community. Um, clubs also form collectives of like-minded and interested people uh, to share in their positive experiences. So really there's quite a variety of different clubs in the school and uh, there's really one for everybody. So when we have our clubs fair that will happen hopefully very shortly within the next two weeks, um, we would love all of the grade eights to sign up for something. There's something for everyone for sure. All right, Mr. Krenzik. Another big change Ms. Duff alluded to is athletics being able to run closer to what we know uh, in terms of just like a regular year. So um, like clubs, uh, they will, all of the athletics will be following the newest uh, provincial health guidelines for school uh, COVID-19 safety. Uh, and just know that there are three seasons of play for the varsity athletic teams and each one includes teams that have tryouts and uh, others will take anyone who's willing to participate. We also have a lot of intramural uh, athletic opportunities at lunchtime and that will all come out over the next few weeks and continue to happen throughout the year. Uh, the athletics department has a website, fleetwoodparkathletics.com, where you can get more information. So between that and, again, signing up for the app, listening to announcements, those are the best ways to pay attention to what's going on in athletics and intramurals. And I would just encourage that if your child is interested in athletics, they really need to be paying attention to those announcements because once the tryouts happen and once teams are formed, it's – basically impossible for us for, for the coaches to change those rosters because someone didn't hear them or didn't participate in the tryout. So please make sure that they are paying attention if they are athletically inclined. And then another cool thing that we have at Fleetwood Park is a homework club. And this is a wonderful opportunity for students to get a little bit of extra support after school, Monday through Thursdays. Uh, it, old times were 3 to 4 p.m. This is all sort of to be determined and finalized. Uh, it's run by our wonderful LST department outside of their main room, which is in the uh, A304 in our third floor of the A wing. And it's in a big common area with lots of space and desks. And like I said, they are finalizing the schedule and uh, how homework club will look, but we expect it will be there. And it's a wonderful, wonderful resource for students. And they can be students who don't normally have support from the LST department. It is open to everyone. And you know, we really look forward to that coming back. It was really missed last year. I'll turn it back over to Mr. Hignall. We have a highly engaged parent advisory council at the school, and we invite all parents to join us. Um, we usually meet the last Monday of every month, and so uh, our first meeting will be on the 27th at 7 p.m. We'll likely be on Zoom again, um, and my hope is that eventually we will get back to face-to-face -face meetings held in the library at the school, 
But um, as all things COVID, we're starting off very conservatively. So I think the first meeting will be on Zoom. Again, everybody is welcome. Uh, I wanted to remind that um, a secondary school PAC does not do fundraising. Uh, the PAC does receive some gaming funds and a really important task that the PAC does is to uh, allocate those gaming funds. So our PAC has um, a significant role in the school. Uh, they directly support the learning that occurs uh, across our school, especially with extracurriculars. And it's a way for parents to ensure that uh, your voices are heard and that you're aware of what's going on in the school. So again, everyone is highly uh, invited to join us um, the last Monday of each month. And uh, speaking of highly engaging activities, I just wanted to highlight uh, an, uh, an exciting opportunity for your children, uh, the Grade 8 Retreat. And so um, at this point with our COVID-19 health and safety guidelines, there are no overnight trips allowed at this point. And so we are in the process of planning an alternative event, which will be um, more than likely a day long um, off campus uh, day of team building and orientation and making new friends and becoming a dragon. Um, and that will uh, occur at the end of September or beginning of October. Uh, and so we uh, encourage all of our grade eights to join us for uh, that day of fun and activity and engagement. Much more detail to come over the next couple of weeks. May I jump in for a quick second, Mr. Higgins? I just wanted to share with the grade eight parents, if you haven't had a child who has come through Fleetwood Park, the retreat, and even though we're looking at it being a day retreat this year, is one of the most important events in uh, Fleetwood Park Dragon students' five-year career here. Uh, we had the great fortune of having a very long grad last year that was two days long and like 20 hours long, but it gave us a chance to talk to students as they came through. And I would say the most common response about things that students found memorable was their grade eight retreat. Students make new friendships, get connected with older peers, learn about what it means to be a dragon. So uh, we really, really encourage students to please try to make it to this event. It's a really important cultural uh, milestone for students to get through and we're really happy to be able to have one this year. Unfortunately, last year we weren't able to even offer a day option for it. So having it be uh, a day retreat is gonna be great. We're really looking forward to it. So thank you, Mr. Ignall. I just wanted to share the importance of that event. It's just such a key thing. Yes. So much fun. Big part of our school culture. Mm -hmm. Okay, a couple of thoughts in closing. Uh, really, I, I wanted to stress again that we really are looking forward to a, a year of greater normalcy. We're looking forward to a near normal year of systems of learning and teaching and celebrating. Um, and with that, we will proceed with great care. Safety is our first priority. We found uh, over the last 18 months that our flexibility and resilience was so important. And I would predict that this year it will be the same. We will continue to be resilient and flexible and creative, but maybe just a little bit more normal than what we have experienced over the last year. That fingers crossed, that's what we really are aiming for. And so um, we're committed to celebrating student success in all forms of learning, curricular and extracurricular, academic and elective, we really are here to help you and your child succeed and move forward at Fleetwood Park. So don't hesitate to contact us at any point throughout the school year. We have open door policies. We are available by email. Please let us know if you need any support. Uh, I am happy that we are back together that we have kids and staff in classrooms. Um, it was a happy and exciting week. Lots of positive excitement in the school as we came back. We will build upon that and move forward. So looking forward to working with you. All the best and thank you for joining us this evening. Thanks everyone. Welcome to grade eight. Yeah. Thank you everyone. Looking forward to meeting you. Take care.